I'm up early. It's like, uh, it's, it's, it's too early. Yeah, that's for sure. I went to sleep a little early, but I, I don't know. I woke up and I was laying there and I was just like, if I finish recording now and doing it now, I guess I wouldn't have to really worry about it the rest of the day. Debating when I was laying there, I was like, well, it is kind of early. Is it a better idea to go and try to play some BR games? And hopefully maybe the lobbies are a little uh, less ridiculous. Or I'm going to end up running into the sweatiest people on earth that have actually been playing all night into the early morning. I could have just dominated multiplayer on a uh, Cold War or something and just talked about all the fun shit that I'm gonna talk about. So, and whatever, man. I'm tired, but, uh, so tonight is actually supposed to be the UFC, uh, 260, I think it is. Fight card has, uh, Stipe Miocic versus Francis Ngannou, Sean O'Malley versus Thomas Almeida, Tyron Woodley versus Vicente Luque. I think there's two more fights, but I can't remember the names. Those are the three that I'm looking forward to most, though, for sure. I got 21k. That room was filled with shit. I'm gonna go get my loadout real quick. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh shit! Do any of them go to the tippy tippy top? I'll uh, run around the building, I guess, until hopefully I could get to the top. This is not the way I planned for things to go, but it is what it is. I just dumped a bunch of UAVs so I can kill everybody that's here, but... Uh, yeah, so Stipe Miocic versus Francis. This fight has already happened before, and we've seen, you know, how it goes. So, I mean, who really knows exactly uh, if it's gonna go any different at all? I would obviously hope that the fight would be a little bit different from, you know, how it was the first time, but yeah, I, I don't think... Francis has improved enough. It's not that I don't think he hasn't improved at all. It's just like, yeah, he's gotten more experience by finishing four more people. But also at the same time, you think about it like a character that you're like power leveling or something like that. You would think, I I'm not saying every fight needs to be hard or, you know, difficult. But how much experience can you really gain when your last four fights were all finished within two and a half minutes? It combined not just two and a half minute finishes on each and every single one of the people it's two and a half minute finish combined honestly the best course of action is just ride around in this bertha while i talk so anyway i don't think that fight's gonna go any different i think stipe is just too good he's gonna be able to defensively you know box him and everything now given i'm wrong a lot of the time i i, I don't think my predictions are necessarily bad they make sense they do. There are absolutely possibilities. One way or the other, the results are, all results are possible. And I don't think I really go out on a limb and say anything too outlandish about things. You know what I mean? Sit there and think that Stipe is going to win is really not that crazy. Although the betting numbers would have you kind of think, eh, I think Francis is a minus 120 and Stipe is like a plus 110 or 105 or something. So the odds are incredibly close, you know? It's just so surprising to me that somehow people can actually bet against the great greatest heavyweight fighter we have ever seen. It's crazy. Uh, I mean, I know Stipe betters are gonna love this shit, so it is what it is. If he loses, I mean, great, we get a trilogy. Sick. I don't know what the fuck John Jones is gonna do, or maybe they wouldn't get a trilogy and John will just jump right in. Who knows? And we got Vicente Luque and uh, Tyron Woodley. I think Tyron can win this fight. If Tyron loses this fight, I hope he doesn't get cut from the UFC. Like, I don't know. I just, I, I think it's a lot of mental shit with him or, or something. Um, the peak Tyron Woodley was absolutely terrifying. And running into Usman and losing to Usman, that, that didn't bother me necessarily. It seems like ever since that point, Tyron just... I mean, he's fighting killers, don't get me wrong, but he was fighting killers before that, and he was steamrolling people. It's not that he, I expect him to steamroll everybody, but, you know, to all of a sudden, after one loss, you know, start losing and losing and losing, it, you know... Makes you wonder. Tyron can win this fight, though, against Vicente. We got Sean O'Malley and Thomas Almeida. Thomas Almeida, I think, is on, like, a three or four fight skid at the moment. And he was considered a killer at one point. Like, it's not that he's not now. He was super scary and I think, like, undefeated or only had one loss or something leading up to it. Had a big win streak and everything. And I forget who he lost to. And then from that point on, I think he's on, like, a three or four fight loss streak. Not playing this game with you. I 
I just get shot by somebody else? I don't know who the fuck that guy thinks he is over there, but you're garbage. I'm gonna either face plan or lose this purposefully. I don't feel like dropping back into that game. Yeah, this whole shit about, you know, talking about, oh, getting on early and playing these lobbies, it's more likely that you'll get into easier lobbies. I don't notice a difference at all. None. Nothing at all. I'm on, you know, North America East, arguably the hardest in North America. So, I mean... Yeah. I think Sean O'Malley can win this fight against Thomas Almeida unless Thomas ends up, you know... Oh, it's all fist. Okay, well, I'm just gonna die. I know that uh, O'Malley gets a whole bunch of shit for, like, his mindset and the stuff that he says, like, oh, I don't feel like I lost to Cheeto and all this other shit. I know, it sounds stupid or whatever, but if it's something that he needs to tell himself or, or, or what, it, it's not a big deal to me. It doesn't bother me. To the point that it bothers other people anyway. Like, some people really just, I, I don't know. People just constantly psychoanalyze the ever-living shit out of people, you know what I mean? And constantly, like, diagnose and say all sorts of shit about people, you know, that they observe all day on the internet, so. I think O'Malley can win that fight, but it's entirely possible for for him to lose to somebody like Thomas Almeida. Thomas is legit. He might be on a skid. We'll, we'll see, you know, how uh, O'Malley bounces back from his other loss. And also, there's a new sniper rifle that's supposed to be coming. This sniper rifle has been rumored for a while, uh, but we just now ended up actually seeing gameplay of it. I, I can't link it or anything like that, but uh, there was some gameplay that was going around of it. Uh, I think it had no attachments when I was watching that gameplay, so it, it should be better than that. Now, to be fair, though, if it works like anything like the Cold War weapons in general at all, especially the snipers, the gameplay I saw I don't think had any attachments on it, so it's very, very slow. Or if it did have the attachments on it, it's bugged. Y you know what I mean? So... He just got killed by Walnut Jeans 58. He literally was just sitting in a brush. And this guy has over 200 levels of experience, and this is how he is playing. This means that he doesn't play any better than this at any other point. This is just what he does. Sorry if I'm calling anybody out here personally, but it just, it blows my mind how you can spend this long on it, want to improve, and then still be bad. It's a whole nother thing. I mean, I don't know Walnut Jeans, so maybe they don't just give a fuck, and they just got time. It's whatever. And if that's the case, hey, respect, Walnut Jeans. This, you will never evolve. You will never get better. I'm excited for the new sniper rifle to come out, even though I'm only going to really be able to use it on Cold War, because <laughs> it's literally been months and they still have not given the proper values to the uh, ADS attachments, the grip attachments, the uh, handle attachments or whatever on the Cold War weapons. Is it because you guys are making like a balance pass over all of the things that are currently there? What's the point of doing this balancing pass over like the FFAR, for example, when you could go and nerf the FFAR and and then go and fix the attachments. And then the FFAR still manages to be better than the other things because now it gets... You would think that you would want to change like all of the base stats and make sure all of those things actually look correct. Uh, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. I can't believe this is a real breathing human being. I have two other people in disbelief as well. Please run him the fuck over. Yeah! Oh, he came back. It's the same dude. He drove back with the truck. He was there the entire time. He was able to drive back to the exact same location and kill the guy. The lobbies are easier, by the way. Everyone with the same exact loadout. FFAR, look at that. Wow, wonder what you killed him with. Let me guess what your primary is. I'm gonna say AUG. Oh, this game fucking sucks. No way it's that popular. There's just no way this game is popular. It's mind-blowing to me. I think that's a really difficult thing about it for me mentally. It's the fact that I know, and you know, like we all know. So like when it happens, it's like even more frustrating. It's like, here it comes, here it comes. Yep, and it's happening, and it happened. That's more frustrating than just being surprised or blindsided by something. Being blindsided by something, yeah, it sucks. But to see something coming, knowing that it'll happen, and it's exactly how you said it would every single time. No way someone could be scummy enough to go and sit in that bush, right? Wrong. No way every single person runs the exact same loadout. That's also wrong. They do. There's no variance here. And I mean, I know a lot of people like to take the game seriously, even though there's no rank whatsoever. It doesn't really matter. Aug versus sniper rifle. Let's see who wins. He throws a flash. FFAR. Nah, fuck the... Uh oh, he's gonna replay. Other player probably isn't replating. Now they are. He's gonna hard peek it. Oh no, he's out of cover now. He got it. Congratulations to you, buddy. So much excitement, I'm sure. I'm just mad I lost. 
I guess. Yeah, I probably should have played Cold War. I got on just to get annoyed at watching. But yeah, new sniper rifle. Uh, I think people die from like the waist up or something like that. It's incredibly powerful. No idea how it'll do in uh, Warzone. I imagine very, very badly, regardless of how much damage it actually does, uh, because it's just going to be outperformed by the other long range rifles, especially considering the uh, grips don't work for the Cold War snipers. So imagine that'll get added to the game. It'll be the world's slowest sniper rifle because they can't fix any of the grips and uh, yeah, it'll be another disappointment. All that time waiting for a sniper rifle and it's not going to aim down sight faster than the slowest HDR. I could almost guarantee.